Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. I wish I had better news for you today. Anyway, I'll just get right to it. The truck is back together. I got it back together last week before I left for the Carlisle Ford Nationals 2019 and I took it out to seat in the rings and on that test drive I did notice a bit of oil smoke coming out but seating in the rings at least for me means running it at full throttle uh, up to the red line and then decelerating you know downshifting that kind of thing trying to load the rings in both directions uh, so that they seat in well anyway I'm doing this and I did notice some oil smoke and I did smell some oil but I thought that that was the ring seating in well apparently what had happened was the dipstick blew out of its tube and I'll show you in a second here it is it comes out very very easily and I'm going to make provisions to hold it in place in the future but also I have concerns about the pressure inside the, of the engine obviously so in addition to holding the dipstick in I'm also going to change the breather that I have the breather that I have now is pretty but I'm not sure if it functions as well as one that's just a complete open filter and I'll show you that in a moment also. This is the vent that was on the truck. Uh, the only place it can vent is out of these holes. I prefer the bigger style like what I've got on the Fairmont and hopefully that's going to do the trick. Along with the dipstick coming out, a bunch of oil went with it. I don't know how much went with it, but I got back and the dipstick was dry and well, you know, the inside of the engine compartment's coated with oil. And then as soon as I got in front of the shop, it started making a bad noise, which I'll share with you now. So everything indicates, every indication that I see says that I need to go back in there, tear the engine down and find out what's going on with it. Now, I'm gonna pull this out, but before I do, I'm gonna get to the point where I've got the cylinder heads or the headers off, and I'm gonna do a compression test just to check to see what's going on. And if I find a cylinder that's low, because it kind of shakes a little bit too, if I find a cylinder that's low, then I'm going to do a quick leap down on that cylinder to see if I can determine where that's going. But either way, it appears the engine is coming back out after I just got it in. And by the way, this is the Monday before we're supposed to leave for the power tour on Friday. And I don't know what's going on. I haven't ordered parts or anything yet. So no stress or anything. Here's the new dipstick. And I had to do use this one because the old one, it just wouldn't bolt up with the headers and everything. The downside is, is I had to drill the block out a little bit larger in order to accept this new dipstick, which is also unfortunate, but like very little effort, like no effort at all. So there's that issue. Cylinder number seven, the spark plug boot had popped off of the uh, spark plug down there and it was resting against the header. That was the only other thing that I found when I got back from that uh, test drive where I was breaking the rings in. There was a little bit of damage to the spark plug wire. So I'm just gonna replace it. Uh, thankfully, the kit came with one extra. This is what it sounds like when I start it up. And you can see that it shakes also. It's on that deceleration. And the fact that I see oil coming out here says that this is something similar to what I ran into with the Ford. Or it might be, and then I got a cylinder problem. Either way, it's gotta come apart, it's gotta come out. Well, it's gotta come out and then come apart. And I'm very sad, because I worked hard on that engine. It's very pretty and uh, something as small and seemingly insignificant as a dipstick and the fact that I ignored the oil smoke uh, brought me to where I am today but there's no use crying over that. Now I think it's obvious I'm not going to be doing a step by step of the removal of this engine. I simply do not have the time. I'll let you know what I find when I find it. I've just completed the compression test and I'll show you what I found. The only cylinder that I'm really concerned about is seven here and that was the one that the spark plug boot came off of. The first time I did it, it was 130, but then it went to 135, but I had the same thing on cylinder number three. This vent, I have a one inch vent in the valve cover, so I'm gonna get that filter I spoke about earlier. And this uh, MI exhaust is two and a quarter coming out of the muffler. Since I'm probably not gonna have time to get to the exhaust shop, I'm just gonna get a couple of turn downs to come off the muffler and go straight down. It's still exiting past the cab of the vehicle, so it would technically be considered legal. I've let the coolant drain out, so now it's time to, uh, well, 
get this front end off and get this engine out of here. I think this time I'm going to try to leave the transmission in the truck and just take the engine. I have the engine out. It was a little messy, but not too messy. So I'm going to mount this on the engine stand and I was sizing up the uh, bolts for the flex plate and look what I found. And I mean, they were like this. Like there was, that one's tight and that one's it. The rest are all loose, which will allow that to flop around and make noise. The smart play would be to uh, drop the oil pan and just take a look at some of the bearings. Maybe not do anything with them, but just take a look. And if the bearings that I pull look good, then uh, it's time for Loctite for these guys, super torquing, and putting this thing back in, which means I don't have to buy any parts, which is great because <laughs> that saves me a ton of time and I can focus on the alignment and some of the other stuff. Been doing some research. I went around to a few forums and, and you know, was checking whether or not using Loctite in the fasteners was appropriate or not. So I went to the source. I'm using ARP fasteners. I went to ARP and, and pulled up the instructions, which, you know, you should probably read. And I didn't read the instructions on these. I just lubricated the threads with ARP lubricant, ran them down with an impact like you saw me do, smiled at the camera and said, this is what I'm doing. Well, here we are now. Uh, I'm not afraid to share my failures, but like I said, there was, some there was some debate online whether or not to use Loctite, but here on ARP's website, in their instructions, number four, it says right there, lubricate the threads of the bolt with Loctite 242 and under the head of the bolt with ARP Ultra Torque Fastener Assembly Lubricant. So in other words, they say to use Loctite on the threads and their assembly lube underneath the head so that when you're torquing things to 85 foot-pounds, they stay put. So straight from ARP, the people that made these fasteners, and honestly, I trust their judgment, this is all they do is make fasteners. Loctite on the threads and the fastener lubricant underneath the bolt head and torque to 85 foot-pounds. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Now I've been debating on whether or not to pull this oil pan off uh, for the past uh, few minutes. I didn't see anything bad in the oil and thinking about the noise, whenever I read the engine it went away, but on deceleration or as the engine was coming down to idle, that's when I heard the noise. And it makes perfect sense that it was the uh, flex plate. In fact, when you come over here and look at the flex plate, you can even see where the paint has come loose and there's even some rust marks here. So there's witness marks that are telling me that yes, this was loose and most likely was the problem. I feel like opening up the engine at this point is kind of a step backwards, especially since I found this. This is an easy fix. I can get it back together and uh, hopefully running either later today or early tomorrow, which is the goal. One more thing I'm going to do while I'm in here, you know, since I'm not going to go down and mess with the bearings or anything, I'm going to go through the engine and redo all of the uh, lifter adjustments. And I talked to my machinist about this and he kind of agrees with me because every time I've installed lifters, they come out noisy and I'm following the instructions. So in other words, keep spinning them. When it stops spinning, give it a half turn more and that sets them. Well, I'm not doing a half turn anymore. I'm going to full turn. And the reason for that is, is because on just about every hydraulic lifter thing I've done recently, including the Ford, I've had an issue with those coming loose and making noise. So I'm just going to nip that in the bud right now. And I'm just going to go full turn whenever I adjust uh, my rocker arms and hopefully I'll be done with it. But that's something else uh, that I'll share with you that I hope you can benefit from if you're building a small block Chevy or in this case, also a small block Ford with that little bit of advice. Assembly lube under the bolt head, Loctite on the threads. just running them down with the impact. According to procedure, with the Loctite. Hopefully they stay put. 
Then I went through and adjusted lifter preload, and instead of doing the half turn like I did initially, I went back and did a full turn. I have an update for you viewers. Uh, I've got the uh, torque converter in and all the other stuff. Right here is where I'm putting the transmission temperature sensor. And what I've noticed is you, I had to trim this down and I trimmed it down as much as I could, but this protrudes down into the transmission quite a ways. I'm told this is the first gear pressure port and the fact that uh, when I took it out for a test drive, I basically had no first gear. It would go into first and then almost immediately into second. I'm wondering if what was happening as I was blocking the port off with this, uh, I've asked Monster Transmission about it, I'm still waiting to hear back from them, but I have a possible solution for this problem. It's kind of a cheesy solution, but uh, I'm extending everything out. So there's this, uh, then this, then this. So basically, I'm stacking all these three things together to uh, basically extend this out so that uh, this won't go in and block the port off. This big opening on the inside, I'm hoping will allow everything to flow through like it should. On the dipstick tube, which was a major issue, also a trip to the hardware store, I got a couple of, uh, well, I'm not exactly sure what to call these, uh, but you're able to twist them by hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this into here, drill and tap it so that I can lock the dipstick into place. I've already measured and I can go right at the top of here and I'll be up above the O-ring uh, when I do this, but that should lock the dipstick into place so that hopefully it doesn't pop out again. I've also ordered a breather, a different breather for the top that uh, has a filter with an opening all the way around. So hopefully that will allow uh, more crankcase case pressure to be vented during harsh acceleration, we'll call it. Here's the solution for the dipstick. It just threads in. I just tweak it, tighten it down, and the dipstick goes nowhere. Locked in. Right, we're almost back together. I've got the exhaust on and transmission and all that stuff is pretty much ready to go. But here's another issue. So I had the drive shaft company uh, shorten my drive shaft. I asked for an inch and three quarter. They went almost three inches. Now, luckily, I've got this long slip yoke. Uh, but also, luckily, Dad gave me the uh, other axle that I estimate came with the manual transmission. So I sent that to them and had them cut that to length based on um, the measurement that I did between here and the tip of the... Uh, uh, yoke here in this flange. This measurement I think was like 51 and a quarter inches or something like that or 58 anyway. So I gave them a direct measurement this time so I should have the correct drive shaft. However, I'm concerned because they didn't balance it and they took one of the weights off. Apparently they can't balance it without this yoke on there. But I'm just going to move forward and I'm going to remove this axle. I'm going to uh, take this uh, U-joint and everything out of here and swap it over to the new one. Uh, same with uh, this U-joint back here. So here's the new axle. Like I said, it's a little bit longer, but I've got to swap over U-joints in the yoke. Hopefully it will sit in farther in the transmission. All right, everything is back together. I filled up the coolant that I took out of it. Uh, it has oil in it has, uh, well, transmission fluid in it. We didn't lose all that much. It's back together, just enough to start it. I decided to forgo the actual issue for now. I really just want to know if it starts up and runs without noise. So you will be here to learn that with me right now. Let's turn the keys, see what happens. Yeah, you know what, before I actually crank it over, I'm gonna see if it holds that fuel pressure. Make sure I don't have any fuel leaks anywhere. And it is. Looks like it's gone up to 50 PSI and it doesn't seem to be dropping at all. Fire extinguishers behind the back seat if I need it. Hopefully I don't. Here goes. Found it. Spark plug wires uh, eight and six have been switched. Plug wires are back the way they should be. Let's try again. I think I still have ignition wires. Not right. I'm going to go through all of them. That time I had wires one and three switched. <laughs> 18654372. It goes in a clockwise rotation. Third time's a charm. noise 
Okay, I'm gonna set base timing, and uh, well, we'll go from there. Base timing's been set. It's a little shaky, but happy. No more noise. Coolant circulated through it. Timing's been set. Now I'm gonna put the rest of this thing together and mess with that drive shaft. I'm really happy it was an easy fix. That is so much better from what it was. I'm much more comfortable with that than I was before. My only concern is uh, for the possibility of a vibration. Uh, I also adjusted the angle of the transmission a little bit. There was this giant spacer that I did put on the underside here that I since moved to the top. And the reason I did that is because when I came back here to the pinion and I checked my pinion angle, it was about seven degrees. So I came up here and checked it and it was a little more than that. So I wanted to make it even and, and just putting this shim underneath the transmission made this seven degrees in the opposite direction. So in other words, what you want when this is on the ground is you want the transmission and the differential to be in a straight line and the axle just takes up the space. So in other words, the angle of this needs to be just the opposite of this in an equal amount. So if this seven degrees positive, then this needs to be seven degrees negative is, is kind of what I'm talking about. And it is exactly that now. So when I put this up, this is a roughly seven degrees and so is the back. If I'm off, I'm only off by about a half a degree. But much happier with uh, the way this slip joint fits in the back of the transmission. I don't feel like that's gonna fall out like I did before. And I was able to put it on uh, here without any difficulty at all. So this was just out far enough. So if you gotta do this, uh, tell the actual shop the measurement between here and the output shaft of the transmission for best results. You might be wondering, was there a vibration because the drive shaft wasn't balanced? Well, I've been driving it and so far I haven't noticed any abnormal vibrations. I did find an oil leak. Initially, I thought it was coming from this valve cover on this side, but it turns out where the oil pressure switch or the oil, yeah, the oil pressure uh, ga gauge or sensor comes out of the back. Um, where it comes out of the top of the block, it's leaking there. So I'm gonna remove that reseal it, put it back in, and hopefully that will solve this oil leak that I'm seeing that tends to drip off this bolt, but it's coming down from up top. So right down there at the base of that piece that's coming up that the oil pressure sensor is coming out of, that's leaking right down there at the block. It's all sealed up now. Put Teflon tape on all the connections. No more leaks. One thing I forgot to mention, when I took it out on its initial test drive, what I noticed was the front tires were coming in contact with the inner fender lip. Uh, so when I brought it back in, I took the opportunity to quote unquote roll the fenders. So I would heat things up with a heat gun to about anywhere between 140 to 160 degrees. And then I would just hit it with my mallet until I rolled things into place or bent things into place. Uh, this took a little bit of doing, but it was successful. And now the tire does not come in contact with the inner fender lip anymore. Now, as I've said throughout this video is time was a big factor in all this. In fact, I think I shot this like the Monday or the Tuesday before Thursday that week when dad was supposed to show up and Friday morning we were leaving on the power tour. So having to take the engine out and all that kind of stuff in that amount of time. And this was after I went to the uh, Ford Nationals in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. The week before that, I was at the Indianapolis 500. So I was trying to get all this done in a very short period of time and there was a lot going on. Super grateful that all it was was the flex plate bolts that were causing that engine noise. Really super grateful on that. Uh, that I didn't have to go back in and tear the engine down. I, I don't really regret not going back in and checking everything because, well, it's, it's been fine since then. Although, yes, those compression numbers were of concern. And for those of you that have that concern, along with the oil leak and everything, I'm gonna be covering that in a future video. In fact, I haven't even gotten into that yet. And this is like months after I actually completed the truck. I've basically been spending the summer
summer trying to edit the videos and get those out so that you could see them. But Brian's going to be back from Africa. Well, Brian was in Africa for a bit this summer. Also, I was doing the editing, so we're going to get back together here in the next week or so and uh, get a look at that engine, find out what's going on with those compression numbers, find out what's causing that excess crankcase pressure. So if you're looking for an answer to that, it is forthcoming. It's just not here quite yet. However, in the next episode, Dad meets the truck for the first time, so you want to tune in for that. You get a chance to see uh, what Dad thinks of it. He gets to drive it and get his impressions of the truck. He owned it for 12 years before he gave it to me, so if anybody's going to know how much it's changed, it would be him. Next week's episode, be sure to tune in for that. And if you haven't caught up on the other episodes of the ETCG Dad's Truck Series. I did a ton of work for this truck. i uh, link down in the description of this playlist so you can kick back, grab some popcorn, and watch it all. Links to parts, tools, additional information, stuff like that down in the description. Also a link to airthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions. I want to thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video, all that kind of stuff. Tell everybody how cool the ETCG Dad's Truck Project is. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.